Pauline. I don't know what's gonna happen next. Can a children's book be a Halloween costume? Can a Halloween costume about a series of children's books be streetwear? Can you make a tailored jumpsuit out of a stretch knit? Can I make an extremely detailed Halloween costume that's also streetwear in less than two weeks? Huh? I guess you're gonna have to find out. Because I'm going as I spy for Halloween. It's almost Halloween. Honestly, actually, scratch that. If you're watching this right now, it probably is Halloween, and if it's not Halloween, it may be after Halloween. Hi from Procrastination Grace. <laughs> I've been in love with I Spy books for as long as I can remember. I think if you are the kind of person who calls yourself Goblin Core or anything involving having a magpie brain, looking at little shinies, being obsessed with trinkets and what's it and who's it's. My guess is is that you too probably loved the work of Walter Wick growing up. Walter Wick was the photographer behind the I Spy books and I want to make that into a Halloween costume. We are less than two weeks out from Halloween <laughs> and I'm just getting started which isn't like the best but I have been dying to do this Halloween costume for over a year. Basically this idea popped into my head fully formed a year ago and I immediately had to draw it out. This may go terribly, this may go great, I'm not really sure. What I do have is a game plan. I've got a jumpsuit pattern that I've made before and a collar from another pattern that I really like. Shout out to the wizard sleeves. And I have this, one orange thrifted turtleneck. I really didn't wanna sew two different things for this, especially because one of those things is a jumpsuit. And the fabric I have chosen for it is a knit and it is very much a jumpsuit made for woven. So I have an idea and it's a bit devious. We'll see, we'll see. It might work, it might not. It's God, what is life if not experimentation? <laughs> also, are we enjoying the blankie? I'm, I'm so, I'm so proud of it. Don't look too close. The cat has already tried to destroy it, but is that not what couch blankies are for? I trusted two years ago, Grace, with the traced version of my jumpsuit pattern. Turns out, not my best idea, but we'll have to see how that one shakes out later. Okay, before we get started, there is a little test we need to do. Because it's very hard to find a white fabric marker for black fabric, and what's out there is kind of dodgy to begin with. So I bought a couple options to see what'll work. I'm much more of an illustrator than a painter, so I bought an empty paint pen. It's generally made for very liquid paints, um, and liquid acrylics, but if I want to do fabric ink and stuff like that, not that liquid. So I've got some leather paint and some water-based speed ball. This is made specifically for nice bright white ink on darker fabrics. It's a bit thick for the pen, but I'm hoping that if I water it down just a teensy bit, I might be able to make something happen. Let's let's experiment and see, shall we? Okay, do you see how thick and gloopy that is? That's that's not going to go in a pan. But if we water it down a bit, it may be fine cuz it is there is viscosity to it, but it is a liquid in theory. And if it's water-based, it should mix. Cuz that's Science? Question mark? Just a little, we're gonna start with a teeny tiny drop. Oh, that was more than a teeny tiny drop! She's full up. If this works, I'm gonna cry tears of joy. First, we're gonna see if my little pen works. Maybe you need to pump it to get it going. We're getting something. Oh, this is, I wanted this to work so bad. Maybe the nib needs to go in the other way. Is this even showing up on camera? Let's try the watered down speed ball just by itself. Oh, and it's in my sleeve now. Oh, it's everywhere. Let's try just writing the letter N because 
And now all I want to do is write nib. Okay. This isn't bad. This isn't quite the aesthetic I was going to aim for, but I think we can get enough fairly fine detail. Part of it's just the fabric too. Like there's only so much you can do about that. And we're going to put a WS for watered speed ball. So that was pretty easy to spread and that's showing up really nice. Let's try it with like not watered down speed ball. Okay, so what I'm noticing is that it's catching all the little crooks a lot more and it's not sinking in as much. Yeah, I immediately don't like this. You gotta load it up so much just to get a little bit. It's very clear when you do get it, but it's gonna be real chunky. We'll do LP for leather paint. Oh, see, this is pretty liquid. This is also pretty good. A little less opaque than the watered down speed ball. Depending on how these dry, I think the watered down speed ball is our winner. The first thing I learned while making this costume is that if you draw a black cat on a shirt, you will summon one in real life. The best way to get these tricksters to leave your work alone is to fill their waffle toy with treats. working at this over the next few days, adding designs here and there when I had a few minutes, but it was really shaping up to be a lovely set of sleeves. Good morning. We made some good progress yesterday, but now it is time to get on to the main event. It is a lot easier to add detail and paint on clothing before all the pieces are assembled. So I'm going to do as much of that as I can today. A lot of the bodice I'm gonna have to wait till it's assembled just because I have to go over seams with a lot of things. But for the pants and the pockets, we can get quite a bit done. So here is my test example from yesterday. As you can see, one of these things is a lot clearer to see. <laughs> than the others. And that is the watered down speed ball. So that's what we're gonna go with. The one thing about this is that all of these pieces are pretty large. They're not gonna fit on my table easily and we want them to be able to lay out flat. I do have a drop cloth, but the thing is, is that drop cloth is, it's freaking huge, dude. So we're gonna do our best. <laughs> begins the Herculean task of painting on all the little intricate designs. This was actually kind of meditative, but I vastly underestimated how long it would take and how hard it was to come up with all the little items. I had a fair few in my original design, but it didn't cover the whole jumpsuit. Making a Halloween themed whole body eye spy by yourself really has you calling people up and saying, Hey, what are some objects? I can't think of any objects. You know, like the noun? Somebody finally actually put her paw in on that. And that got there. We're just gonna make it a paw print. I gotta go make sure my cat doesn't lick up a bunch of speedball and kill herself. Okay. Show me your paws. Now let's see them beans. Let's see them beans. I gotta, I know you don't like it, but come on. Oh, 
I don't know what's gonna happen next. Okay. I need to see Paw though. Yeah, I need to see your Paw. I, I wanna see them pause. I gotta see them pause. I know, it's yucky. I think she's good. I think I got it off. I think she walked it off. Please don't call PETA on me. <laughs> And if you're wondering why I'm wearing headphones this go around, it's because my house sounded like this for the entire day. I bet you're asking, Grace, what demon possessed you to make a tailored jumpsuit with a complicated hand-painted design out of a brushed knit? Well, first of all, Baphomet. Second of all, a knit isn't nearly so hard to work with if you use a good stabilizer. I'm cheap, so my stabilizer of choice is tissue paper. fairly easily. Even the darts. And they were pretty comfy too. But this is where the wheels really started falling off. I'm not sure whether it was the two days trapped inside or the time pressure or what, but I sewed half of the bodice together inside out. Then I realized that maybe it wasn't such a good idea to trust two years ago Grace because she had only cut out half the bodice in the petite adjustment. So I spent the rest of the afternoon recutting the majority of the bodice. I was finally able to leave my apartment at about 5 p.m. and I spent the rest of the evening trying to catch up on errands. Well folks, it certainly is Wednesday. It has been a week and it is only Wednesday morning at this point. My allergies have been going crazy. I was stuck inside for the last two days because when I tried to open the door on Monday morning to go do my laundry at the laundromat, the frame ripped out of the wall and then I couldn't leave because I couldn't open my door. And then I couldn't leave because it took a full business day for them to make a new door frame. So I left my house for the first time since Sunday last night at about 5 p.m. Hi, you coming up? Yeah, I agree, that's how I feel. I have to wear this costume to a party on Friday night. And what that means is I have to finish sewing it today if I want to paint the rest of it and have time for it to cure before I actually go on Friday night. Which means I need to have this costume done by the end of tomorrow, which is Thursday. Oh, I'm still filming. <laughs> Just know that it's going to be a little disheveled today and there's not a lot I can do about it. We're getting there, we're getting through it, we're making the deadlines. Sometimes life just throws quite a bit at you at once, and that's just how it's gonna go. So I have the fronts and the backs 
assembled to each other. Before I put them together, I'm going to do something that isn't mentioned in the pattern, but that's because they don't tell you to use a knit. Now this is just going on vibes and general advice that I've had before. There are gonna be a couple places where we're gonna want to have a little bit more stability so it doesn't just warp all to hell. And I have sparkly yellow twill tape that I was gifted for Christmas many moons ago. I have no idea what I would use it for. This is the perfect thing to use it for. Because, like, what what do you do with sparkly yellow twill tape if you don't have, like, a, a Beauty and the Beast themed sweat collection? What else could you use? sparkly yellow twill tape for just like a high glam scarecrow outfit but it's twill tape it's twill tape i don't know i'm not worrying about it what i am worrying about is how i get this onto my thingy mabob so here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna draw my seam lines out on my various pieces i'm gonna get the neckline i'm gonna get the shoulder seams and then when i have the top and bottom assembled, I'm also going to apply it to where the zipper is going to go because I really want that to be stable because zippers, zippers is hard and zippers is extra hard on knit. So this should help immensely and also use up my sparkly twill tape, my sparkly yellow twill tape. Like it's cute. It's genuinely cute, but good God, I have no idea what else to do with it. Later, a spooky guest joined me. I guess he got the memo about the Halloween vibe? I'm pretty sure he's a jumping spider. Hey dude, what you doing on my iron? This is not, this is not ideal. And that thing gets very hot. I don't want to iron a spider. You know what, I'm getting a glass. I'm just, I'm getting a container. I can't do this. And then? She straight up disappeared. I have created my own jump scare situation. Well, it is a Halloween episode. With my heart rate elevated and time running out, I had no choice but to listen to my Halloween playlist and soldier on. I'm afraid of no ghost. With the bodice constructed, I applied some heavy interfacing to the collar and neckband. I sewed the collar together, then sandwiched it into the neckband and sewed. I pinned the whole mess onto the neckline and encased it with bias tape. Ooh, yeah, that's great. Just like fully block the light. What if I did sort of a this? Where are those girls? <laughs> You'll tell me where those girls are. Well, hello. As you can see, I've pretty much lost the light because it gets dark at like 5 p.m. now. I have made some really good progress. We've got the collar on. I've got bias tape attached to the sleeve holes. I just have to, you know, actually hem them or fin finish sewing it down. Then I have to attach the top to the bottom add a zipper, and then just hem the pants. While I would love to do that on camera, it's all gonna start looking like a real gritty film noir. If anything big happens, I'll let you know, but I think tomorrow I'm gonna open up and there's just gonna be a wonderful done jumpsuit. Just ta-da! It's fine. You have a good night. Sleep tight. And tell me, where are those girls?
Oh, this old thing? Oh, this cute little thing? You mean the comfiest, cutest, coolest thing I've ever made so far? This, just for like sheer range of mobility and comfort and kickability, has got to be uh, worth all the pain of making a tailored jumpsuit out of a stretch knit. It's not perfect. We're not going to look too close at some of the little imperfections, but you know, the zipper got in there. The zipper got in there fairly straight. Let me give you the full effect. It's hard because I live in a small apartment, so this is like the best you're getting. I love how like half and half it is right now, but we gotta make it even better. So let's uh, get painted. And now, a final time lapse as I paint the most important details of the jumpsuit and add the patch. a big old design on the back, under the patch, and lightly tacked the patch on so that I can take it off and wear this in the future without, you know, inviting people to stare at my body. I spy a duck, a thimble, a rat, a shovel, a coffin, a clock that's a cat, two types of eight balls, four bowling pins, a prize, a horseshoe, and a fake tooth grin. other than to be obsessed with this. This is possibly the greatest Halloween costume I've ever made. It's cozy, it's easily recognizable, it feels like moving art, and it is something I absolutely plan to wear, not together, just as like regular pieces of clothing, and I think I can get away with it. The only cons I would say is that if I was to do this again, or if you were to do this next Halloween, maybe don't use a brushed knit. It's very warm and cozy, but it does make painting a little bit harder, and give yourself way more time, way more time. Give yourself so much more time than you think you need to make this. The fact that I got this done in a week and a half is a miracle.
circle. One thing I learned in the process of making this, you may have noticed in the time lapse that one of these bats was a lot higher up than the other and now they're somewhat even. It turns out with a lot of determination, grit, and gentle dabbing with water, you can take speedball off as long as it hasn't cured yet, but you gotta be real careful with it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this costume. It was a lot of fun to make and I was surprised at how easy it ended up coming together. If you do something like this, I wanna see it. Honestly, I think this could be a whole streetwear trend, just like the I Spy look. I'm into it, I wanna see it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. You know, sometimes you don't get to choose how your Halloween season is gonna go, but what you can choose is your Halloween costume. So I hope you had a safe and spooky fall. And with this, we move into winter together. Pumpkins bared, blankets cozy, and hearts wide open. I'll see you on the flip flop. For those of you who keep up video to video, I have some very important news. We've named him Hamish.